hi guys welcome to my office space and welcome to my may monthly reset routine if this is your first time here and you've never seen one of my resets before the way this usually works is we start off with goal setting we do all of the goal setting in notion i reflect on last month's goals set new goals for the new month then we go into looking at my budget my income versus my expenses from last month and today we are continuing with the youtube analytics segment that i started in my april monthly reset that you guys had a really good response to. So we're gonna keep it around for this month. I'm not gonna go too in depth about explaining my Notion setup or anything because I don't want it to be repetitive for the people who do watch these every month. If you wanna know anything about my Notion, my systems, how I do all of this, check out my past monthly resets and also check out my Notion tour because all of those details are in those videos. And I don't wanna spend too long on it here, but this is my monthly goals page. Let's go ahead and get into reviewing my April goals. I loved how this page turned out. Okay, so my quote for last month was, discipline is self-care and my little image was stay consistent and do the work your next level is waiting for you april was really challenging and i don't want to get into the grit of why but just from like a personal and mental health perspective as well as a workload perspective april was extremely tough and i'm really proud of how i did with my goals and just personally in the second half of the month but the first like week or two of the month was a complete wash in terms of prioritizing my goals I was really focused on the move as well as some personal things. So when we're talking about how I did with these goals, I'm pretty much just going to ignore the first like week and a half of April because I was just not on my game. I was not my best self and I was not paying attention to these things. Putting that out there, but we're going to talk about kind of how I've been doing with them. The second half of the month recently, how do I feel? Starting off with YouTube and social goals, post parts two and three of my moving series. I did do that. I posted part three today and I will be finishing the moving series in May, which I'm excited for as much as I have loved how the moving series is turning out. And I really did enjoy having like a series on my channel. I am just like excited to get back to my regular flow of content and to not have like a backlog of footage anymore. Cause I don't really love the feeling of like having a bunch of footage just waiting to be edited. I much more prefer making content more in the moment, filming a video, editing it, putting it out, filming a video, editing it, putting it out. And that's definitely something that I've learned about myself. Make more money from AdSense than I did last month. Obviously the month is not over so I cannot say in this moment whether or not I've accomplished that but I will have editing Brielle or some sort of future Brielle jump in here and hopefully give more of a solid answer or at least a better prediction of whether or not I'm going to hit that. Health and fitness goals. Do a class pass trial and try new workout studios in the area. So I did do this. I signed up for a class pass free trial and I actually really liked it and ended up renewing it so I'm now paying for class pass. I think the level of class pass that I have is like 80 something dollars and it gives you like 40 credits which works out to like four ish workout classes. It's not like extremely affordable but it is way more affordable than the Pilates classes that I was paying for before. So I'm gonna like try out a few months of class pass and see how I feel. I have found a Pilates studio that I like that I can do through class pass and I've also been doing other things like hot yoga. You can do like meditations on there. So I think that's gonna be really cool. I'm doing a candle lit hot yoga class with my boyfriend this week. So I've really been enjoying class pass so far. And I do like that it has had me testing out a ton of different studios. I've really also started learning what I do and don't like in a workout class and what my favorites are. And that's been really interesting. And I really have class pass to thank for that because me and my friend Annabelle who lives in the neighborhood have just been trying out all of these different crazy studios. And I've really learned that I do not like crazy cardio classes. And I also don't like just like really tough, very brutal workout classes. I don't like tough instructors and I don't like mega former, which is like, it's like Pilates, but it's way more intense and brutal. And I did a mega former class and literally felt like I was going to pass out or throw up. And the instructor was really harsh. So he just kept being like, you know, push through, shake, like you should feel yourself struggling. And that does not really encourage me. I'm much more of a fan of like gentle encouragement instructors that are like, do what you can, you can modify this move if you can't do it. So I definitely have learned those preferences and have taken some workout classes that I did not love that have taught me more about like what I need in a workout, what really motivates me and what doesn't. Definitely think Pilates and yoga are my preferred workout classes. I took a dance cardio class that was literally traumatic. <laughs> as soon as we like started doing burpees, I was like, never again, never again. You cannot convince me to do a burpee. I will not do it. So <laughs> I did a couple 
accomplish that goal anyway, tangent aside. Incorporate movement four plus times a week. Again, we're not counting the beginning of the month because I was not working on it all. But since I actually have moved in and gotten back into my routine, I have been doing at least four workouts a week, which I'm really proud of. Not only have I been taking workout classes, but I've been playing some tennis. And also me and my boyfriend have started going to LA Fitness. So I'm getting back into strength training and lifting weights, which I'm really happy about. And he's like very knowledgeable, I feel like about like weightlifting and all that. So he's been like training me. Basically, I've just been doing his workouts. And I love that because it takes me out of having to think too much about my workouts. Like I can just show up and do what I'm told. And it's way easier and more motivating than trying to self-motivate or force myself to choose what workouts I'm doing, if that makes sense. So yeah. I have been succeeding with that. Start the new apartment off with good habits, responsible choices, cleaning, organizing, and Ohio slash do it now. Ohio stands for only handle it once, meaning like if you use something, put it away right away instead of just leaving it out. I'm gonna go ahead and check this off. I feel like I have been doing a really good job of using my weekends as like a reset time to do the laundry, to really like get on top of dishes. We definitely still have more unpacking and organizing and all of that to do, but I do feel like we've been starting off this apartment with good habits in the sense of like, more often than not, I'm going to bed with the apartment in good shape and we're not letting things stay messy for a prolonged period of time. And those were kind of bad habits that we had in our studio. So wasteless time and when you're working, work. And when you're relaxing, truly relax. I so wish that I could say that I did a good job with this this month, but the reality is that I just didn't. And I wanna carry this over into my next month's goals because I do think it's something that is a big weakness of mine and that I do really want to work on. Specifically when I say waste less time, I'm talking about my phone. And also I wanna just like be more strategic with my time in terms of like habit batching, knowing when is a good time to do computer work versus to do chores, just kind of knowing what that split looks like and what is the healthiest and most sustainable for me. So yeah, I do think I'm gonna continue that goal, but I do think a weakness of this goal is it is pretty vague and abstract. And what I wanna do going into May to give myself a better chance of success is setting up specific actionable tasks that can help me work towards that. I love the principle of it, but it's very vague. Like waste less time is like such a weak, flaccid goal. <laughs> I cannot like realistically implement. Money and income goals, pack lunch for the office more, bring in coffee. I did not do this. I was going to the office more at the beginning of the month when my mental health was literally in the drain and also we weren't really moved in. So it wasn't practical for me to be bringing in lunch because we didn't really have food prepped like that. And also I was just like treating myself because of how rough things were mentally, which no regrets about that. But I did not stick to that goal. However, I do really like that goal and want to recycle it also for next month. So that's how April went. And to be honest, I'm extremely proud of how many of these goals I actually did accomplish despite it being a very difficult month for me and feeling really thrown out of routine and out of my normal structure of life. I'm really proud of the fact that I was able to pull off as much as I did. So let's go ahead and get into planning for May. Again, it's another month where I didn't really premeditate on my goals. Like I don't really know what I'm gonna set. So we're gonna be just kind of figuring it out as we go. Starting off with YouTube and social goals. So I wanna set some attainable, but also just some more fun goals, goals that I don't normally set. So we're gonna start off with a very simple one, which I know I'm gonna do. And that is just to post the final part of my moving series. I think there's only gonna be one more part of that series. So I wanna just like get that done and have that project be finished. I think that'll be really satisfying. I'm gonna recycle my goal from last month to just make more from AdSense than I did in April. I just think that's a fun goal to set. Obviously it's not entirely in my control because I can't predict how my videos are going to perform in a month, but it does just kind of encourage me to like make sure that I'm posting and do what I can to continue scaling that income. And I do really want to continue that upward trajectory. And I think realistically, I probably will because the more videos that are on my channel, the more chances for people to find me. And hopefully the snowball effect of my growth will just continue to scale my AdSense revenue. I'm also gonna set a goal to focus on posting searchable content. I've started planning some of my videos for May and I think it's gonna be a really strong month for me in terms of posting very searchable videos that have the potential to perform well. So that will be cool and I just wanna remind myself to focus on creating those videos in May. I kinda of wanna set one more to have one video reach 500 
plus views. So this can either be a video that I post in May that hits 500 views or an older video that just really starts growing in May and reaches over 500 views. It would be awesome if it was a video I posted in May, but I'm still gonna check it off even if it is, say a video I posted in April that just keeps growing and hits 500. That's a lot more YouTube and social goals than I normally set, but I do really like that they are fresh goals. It's not just a views goal, a subscribers goal, a certain income goal. Like I like these, I think they're fun and they're gonna be cool things to just like track and see because I do feel like something that has really improved in the past month or two is that my view on analytics has shifted where I'm just like really interested and fascinated by those numbers now as opposed to feeling so discouraged by them. I don't know if that's just because my channel has been doing better, but I do also think that it's just become something that's more fun to me. So, okay. Let's move on to health and fitness goals. I'm gonna keep the goal to work out four plus times per week on average. I feel like that's a very sustainable and achievable number. I'm frequently working out more than that. So I feel really good about just keeping that goal as kind of something safe that I can accomplish and feel really good about. But I also just think that four times a week is a great number to be working out. So I'd be happy with that. Okay, this is kind of an untraditional health and fitness goal, but I feel like it's very aligned with wellness, which is also really what I want health and fitness to mean to me, but that is going to be to do more mindful practices. Specifically, I have in mind to meditate more. That's something that I've really been craving recently and also stretching. I think it would be great for me to incorporate more stretching, not only because it's like a great way to get in touch with my body, but also because it's a good way to recover from, you know, the strength training I'm doing and the workout classes. I have like a very strange personal and lifestyle goal in mind that I want to set, but it is to get my nails done. I know that sounds weird, but I have been going without nails for many months just because I didn't feel like I had the financial means to get my nails done but I really miss having them and I just want to treat myself to that this month. It sounds so silly too but it does really improve my confidence. I also want to set a goal to order my new work desk and chair. I'm going to add in parentheses here to work on my work from home setup. When I first started working from home I went to Ikea and purchased this desk and chair literally for as cheaply as possible. I bought like the cheapest items I could find. I think they were both under a hundred dollars each. And while that served the purpose of giving me somewhere to work because I just desperately needed a surface to be able to work on, it's not the most comfortable or ergonomic setup. Like this chair and desk are not meant for long hours at the computer, but that's what I really need them for. So I really want to order like a proper standing desk with an adjustable height. And I want to get like one of those gaming type chairs that actually supports my back. Instead of this, which is probably like the worst type of chair I could be sitting on, it's like not good for you. So I wanna get a new proper work from home setup in this new office space. Might even get some storage for the office. Just really wanna focus on setting up my work environment this month. Okay, our recycled goal, which was to waste less time, separate work time and relaxation time. And underneath this, I'm going to put specifics <laughs> of how I can actually do this so that I'm not just like, I think I wasted less time this month. Like I, I wanna avoid that. Plant three trees on the Forest app every day. If you're not familiar with the Forest app, I'm gonna put you on, okay? This app has been such a productivity hack for me for years and something that I really relied on in school a lot and also just when I need to get a big project done. And I wanna start incorporating it into my day to day, not only for the purpose of productivity, but also just for getting me off my phone. So basically how it works, is it's this little free app that you can download on the app store where you basically use it as a timer. So you can set anywhere from a 10 minute timer all the way to two hours. You can choose what type of plant you wanna grow. You can add a tag for what activity you're doing. So entertainment, work, etc. So you can kind of keep track of what are you using your focus time on. And then you just click plant. And basically what it does is for the 10 minutes or the two hours or whatever length of time you set it for, there's a timer on your phone. You can't open your phone without killing the tree, which for some reason really works on me. I don't want to kill the tree. I feel bad. I feel guilty. <laughs> I feel like I'm killing a living thing if I kill my tree on this app, which, hey, it works. No complaints. But basically, 
yeah, you can't touch your phone for that amount of time. And I do actually feel as though I stick to this. So if I can plant three trees on the app every day, I'm gonna put three plus, cause obviously I would love to be planting way more than that. But whether it's a 10 minute timer or a two hour timer, I think that's very doable and it'll make sure that I'm spending more focused present time in my day. I'm also gonna set a goal to intentionally leave my phone out of the room more often. So whether this is leaving my phone out of the office when I'm doing work or even like leaving my phone in the kitchen when I'm watching TV, like little things where I'm just leaving my phone in a separate place from me instead of constantly feeling like I need to have it attached to my hand. And then for money and income goals, I'm gonna set a goal to have seven no spend days in the month. I'm just gonna go ahead and track this in here with the to-do list and put the dates of each day that I accomplish this. I don't have any sort of habit tracker built into my actual Notion template. So this will be just like a good, easy solution. I don't frequently track habits because I feel like it's kind of unsustainable. But for something like this, I feel like it's doable because it's not like something I'm trying to do daily by any means. And then I'm also gonna recycle the goal from last month, which is just to pack lunch and bring coffee for work. Okay. I feel really great about all of those goals. Now we do the quote, the photo, and the areas of focus. So I do feel like YouTube is an area of focus here just based on the goals that I set. We're gonna go with spirituality just because of my goal to do more meditation, more stretching, and also just to be more present by using the tactics we talked about before. So I feel like those kind of fall under the spiritual umbrella. I set a lot of goals this month, so I really hope that I'm able to accomplish a majority of them because that would be great. I wanna go ahead and use this meditation photo I want to give peaceful wellness vibes with my image for this month. Okay, that's cute. Love it, love it, love it. I think I'm actually going to take something from my yearly goals page that I wrote in my kind of intentions for the year, how I wanted to feel this year, that I think really aligns with wanting to meditate more, wanting to waste less time, pursuing my goals. Okay, so I just put blooming, which was my word for the year, and I think it's good to remind myself that that's my word for the year. And then I put this section from my how do I want to feel this year reflection, which just says, I want to chase my dreams from a healthy, trusting place. And I think that is really what I want this month is to feel mentally healthy and stable and okay while also putting in work, effort, time, energy towards things that matter to me without burning myself out, suffering mentally in the process, depriving myself of things like sleep, which I have been doing this month. I've been up till 3 a.m. several times this month and that is not how I do best. That is not how I function best and it is not how I want to be existing. Okay. I feel really good about that. We definitely went in on the goal setting this month. I've been filming for 40 minutes and we are only in part one of this reset video. So I'm gonna wrap this shit up and I will see you guys probably tomorrow or something to film the finances, income versus expenses portion of this monthly reset. Today we are doing the budgeting portion of this video. We're gonna be taking a look at my April income versus expenses. And I'm also gonna show you guys my income stream tracker. I'm not sure if I've ever shown this before, maybe in my Notion tour, but I have an income stream tracker, which is just a page in my Notion where I keep track of just how my income fluctuates from month to month. So I'm gonna show you guys that because I just thought that would be a little interesting way to spice up this portion. And it is a part of what I actually do in order to reset at the beginning slash end of a month. Without further ado, let's take a look at the April monthly budget. This monthly budget page is just a Google Sheets template that I I purchased off of Etsy. I always have it linked in the description of all of my monthly reset videos. I would really recommend it. However, I am kind of interested in looking into different budgeting or finance type apps, either for budgeting or for helping to save and invest. One of those apps that like rounds up your purchases. If you guys are familiar with anything like that, please leave your recommendations in the comments because I've been really feeling inspired to just up my finance game and start really putting good habits into place because my income is going to increase in a few months. I was offered a promotion and I know that in the fall I'm going to be making more money so I just want to set myself up with the best habits possible so that when my income does increase I'm in a good place to make the most of it. Well with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at my April budget. Of course starting with the income summary which is where we always start. So we have my two paychecks both of which were $1575.88. I have my estimated as $1500 but I think this is actually my like baseline paycheck. So if I work a full 40 hours each week but no overtime 
overtime, I think this is actually what my paycheck is if I work no overtime. So I could technically change the expected to be 1575, but I think I'm gonna keep it just because I like the fact that every month or almost every month my paychecks are higher than expected. It's just a nice, a nice little exciting thing. So I'm gonna keep it as it is. In terms of Poshmark, so this is actually my earnings from March that is getting paid out in April. So because I transfer my Poshmark earnings at the beginning of the month, this is money that I earned in March from Poshmark that is being paid out on April 1st, if that makes sense. You'll see that this is different when we go to my income streams because for that tracking, I include the money that I actually earned that month. It's a little confusing. Then we have Facebook Marketplace, which this is probably the last month that we're gonna have any earnings from that, sadly, because those extra few hundred dollars have been really clutch with helping us through the move, but we made another $425 from Facebook Marketplace this month. We ended up selling our love seat, which was a big sale and some like little table thing. So that was really nice to have an extra $400 and really help me out this month. Then let's take a look at bills. So my new rent for the new apartment was $1,900 this month. I am going to be increasing the budgeted amount to $2,100 because the $1,900 does not include utilities. Some of the utilities at this apartment are included. The only one I think that I have to pay is electric and maybe like trash or something. Thing. There's like two utilities that I do actually have to pay. So I think $200 is a safe estimate. So we're gonna go with $2,100 for my estimated rent going forward. And we have my Epidemic Sound membership. This is something that I use for YouTube. My AMC membership, which I'm honestly considering canceling because the past few months, I've only really used this maybe like once. So it's really not worth the $25 that I'm paying at the moment. When I first got it, it definitely was because we were going to the movies at least once a month, but we've just kind of stopped going as frequently. So I do think I'm gonna cancel that, especially because I just added a new membership here. I don't know why it's in all caps, but I'm paying for class pass now and that's $89 a month. So being able to cut $25 out of my bills would really be helpful in making room for that new membership. $89, definitely a little bit steep, but it is saving me money compared to the workout classes I was doing before, as I mentioned in the goal setting portion of this video. My total bills for the month were $2,034.94, meaning my bills were about 60% of my spending this month. Okay. Now let's take a look at the expense summary. So I do think I'm going to adjust this gas estimated number because it's always less than this. I think maximum, if I filled up my car twice, would be like 125. So let's go ahead and lower that budgeted amount. Laundry, I had $40 budgeted, $70 actual. This is not actually how much I spent on laundry, but I have to use quarters now. So this is how much I withdrew from the bank to have on hand as quarters. So hopefully the amount that I withdrew will last me through the next month and I won't have to worry about spending more money on laundry in May. Vocal lessons is a fixed expense, $260 every month. Moving expenses, I spent $45.80 on this month. Variable expenses, $891. 48. And this is my first time this year, I think, being under $1,000 in variable expenses. In terms of what my actual expenses were this month, nothing crazy, but I did have a few big ticket items. I had to pay for Apple Care because I had computer problems this month and the repairs were free because I was still within one year of purchasing my computer, but they told me if I didn't buy Apple Care in the next week, I would no longer be covered. And that computer scare did kind of freak me out, so I went ahead and paid for Apple Care. So that was $100, which is a little rough. Most of these expenses in here are pretty normal. Things like coffee, breakfast, Target, nothing crazy. Company store, so this was me buying makeup from my company store. Amazon, and then these were two pretty big ticket purchases. I ordered workout clothes, I ordered from Skims, and those were big expenses, but I don't regret those because I'm feeling so uninspired and just over my current wardrobe, and I don't feel like the clothes that I own really help me feel more confident, so I really wanted to spend some money on some more high quality basics in hopes that those will become new go-to pieces that I do actually feel good about. My two pairs of leggings that I own right now, which are pants that I wear really frequently, one of them literally has fuzz all over them permanently. Like literally the crotch is fuzzy. It's unhinged and the other one has like three holes in the butt and I'm like is this really how much I value myself that I'm around here wearing holy fuzzy pants no so I have no regrets about that I bought sushi for me and my boyfriend I bought new towels for the master bathroom I went to a concert so I paid for food there Starbucks Ubers and now as promised let's take a look at my notion income streams page so this was something I started back in 2022 to just kind of track what income streams I have from month to month how much money those things are making and just just also get a kind of overarching idea of how much money I make in the year, what sources are making that up, etc. So I actually think I want to give this
this income stream tracker a bit of a refresh. I think that would be really fun. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I think I'm gonna add some more columns here. And I got this idea from, I think her name's Kelsey Rodriguez. She's a YouTuber as well, but I saw that she had these extra columns in her income stream tracker and it really did inspire me. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a select property. So we're gonna make a category for type. And then as the options, I'm going to put active, passive and hybrid. So this is referring to obviously whether it's a active or passive income stream. So we're gonna go ahead and move that right next to the stream title. I, I, I'm so excited, okay. And then the other property that I wanna add is status. So inactive is going to be an income stream that I'm not currently like focusing on or pursuing. Inconsistent would be an income stream that's not making money every month, but that is making occasional money. And then making money will be for my income streams that actively bring me in a paycheck or bring me in a payout every single month and it's like a dependable source of income. So we're gonna go ahead and fill out the type of income stream first. If you don't know the difference between active and passive income, basically active income is an income source where the hours you put in directly translates into the money you make. So for example, a regular job, you work an hour, you get paid a certain amount for that hour or you have a salary, that's still an active income stream. Basically your time is tied to the money you make and it's something you have to actively do in order to make money. A passive income stream is something that you set up once, you do once, and you continue to make money from that thing. So for example, that would be something like an online course that you create once and then it continues to make you money. And then I also added hybrid, which in my opinion, something that would be a hybrid income stream is YouTube AdSense because I feel like AdSense is both because on the one hand, you are making passive income from all your past videos as you sleep, as you are not working on YouTube, you continue to make money. But then at the same time, in order to keep a channel alive and thriving and getting views, you do kind of have to continue creating videos. So in my opinion, YouTube ads is a hybrid stream. So let's go ahead and put YouTube AdSense here. I just had YouTube, but when I start making money from like affiliates and sponsorships, I feel like it's good to just be more specific there. So obviously my salary is an active income stream, freelance active income stream, Poshmark, I'm gonna go ahead and put Poshmark as a hybrid income stream because I do already have a lot of items listed on there and I don't really have to put in a ton of work to continue making money from that stream. But I think to call it totally passive would be unfair because it's not like digital products where I list it once and it can keep being sold and sold. It's like each item that I sell has to be listed. AdSense hybrid, reselling active because that's more of listing very specific items to sell. It's not like I have a catalog of items just being resold. So I don't actually have any fully passive streams of income yet, which is unfortunate, but hopefully we get there. Okay, and then in terms of the status, so salary is obviously making money. Freelance work, I would say is inactive. I haven't made any money from freelancing this year. There were months last year where I made money from freelance work, which is why it's still in my chart. Poshmark is making money, getting paid from that every month. YouTube AdSense, inconsistent. Reselling, I would say inconsistent because I can't imagine that that's going to linger as an income stream month to month after we're done with the move. We're just gonna set the total as making money because I don't know how to avoid having to put something there. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill out my April stats. So we're gonna pull out my calculator and add up my paychecks. So that's 3151.76. Freelance work, zero. Surprise, surprise there. Poshmark earnings for April were 57.95. Not super high month, but also not terrible. YouTube AdSense didn't get paid out this month, so that's at zero. I don't think I'm gonna realistically get paid out again until like July, which kinda sucks, but it is what it is. Made 425 from reselling, putting my total at 36, 34, 71 for the month. This number has to be wrong. There's no way I made $4,000 last month. Yeah, this is way wrong. I don't know how I got that. Anyway, <laughs> let's fix that. Okay, something that I just added is a total column where I'm gonna keep track of my total so far for the year for each income stream as well as like total total. I can't figure out how to do this automatically in Notion, so I guess I'll just add it up for now. But what I also did was because I do have a yearly income goal for 2023 that I set at the beginning of the year, I added this little chart here where it basically shows what percentage of that goal, which was 60,000 I've made so far, which I think will be really cool to see my progress.
dress. I'm gonna be honest, guys, I don't think I'm gonna hit that income goal this year, but I still just kind of want to see how close I can get to it. Right now, we're about a third of the way through the year, but I'm only like 25% to that goal. I am definitely gonna be making more money than I made last year, so that's at least something. But yeah, let's go ahead and add up the total for all these other income streams as well. This is cool too, because it'll also show me what piece of that overall income goal pie each of these income streams makes up. So I like that as well. I think that's really cool. Okay, cool. I am so much happier <laughs> with how this page looks than when we first opened it up. I think this is so cool. So definitely going to continue with the system. And I just feel like it looks so much nicer than last year looked. Like it just feels more concise, more detailed. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, you can add like an icon to each month. Okay, this is so cool. So I'm switching out all of the number icons for these little sparkles. Love that. Oh my God, I love it. Okay. And then for the stream. Yeah, we're gonna go with the heart for the stream emoji. That's it for the budgeting portion of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And now we're going to go ahead and jump to the YouTube analytics. Hi, welcome to the YouTube analytics portion of the video, AKA my favorite part to film because I find this stuff so interesting. We're gonna get into my channel analytics from the month of April. I am filming this portion a few days after I filmed the rest of this reset, just so I could give you guys the most accurate stats possible. There are a couple days left in the month that are not accounted for in these analytics, but we're gonna be looking at April so far. So in April, I have gotten a total of 3.3K views, gained 296 watch time hours and 38 subscribers. From these gray arrows, you can pretty much tell that this is not quite as good as I did last month. Then we have this chart here, which shows my uploads and my views from April. So as you can see, I only posted three videos in April and I did not post for the first like two weeks of the month, which is not at all normal for me. So let's break down the three videos that I did post. So the first video that I posted this month was an LA apartment hunting video. It was the second part of my moving series and that has gained 211 views. Then I posted my how I hacked my confidence and actually started believing in myself video. I'm actually really proud of that video and based on your guys' comments, I can tell you guys really connected with it, which always means so much to me when I can tell that a video like resonates and actually helps people. And that has gotten 194 views so far. And then I posted my I found my new LA apartment video, which is part three of my moving series and the reveal of my new apartment. And that has gained 195 views so far. And it's only been up for like four days at this point. Definitely not as many uploads as I wanna be doing in a month. And my videos that I posted this month didn't do as well as the videos that I posted in March. That being said, I still think that especially the moving videos have the potential to keep growing and they have been still getting views. I'm happy about that. And the stats from this month are not that much worse than last month, even though my videos that I posted didn't do as well. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at my revenue analytics. This is the most interesting part in my opinion. So, so, so far in April, I have generated $14.90 in estimated revenue. This includes my stats up to Thursday, April 27th. So this doesn't include Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I'll have three more days of earnings in here. Since I had a goal this month to beat out my earnings in March, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at this, how much you're earning chart. This is like one of my favorite analytics to look at when I go into YouTube studio. I just find it so interesting. So I made $19.25 in March. And so far I've made $14.90 in April with three days left to make money. So I think it's safe to say that I'm probably not going to beat my March statistic, but I will probably get pretty close to it. So if I had to guess, I'm probably going to end up making maybe $7. $17 this month. That's like my ballpark estimate, which is still substantially better than I did in January and February. So I'm still happy with that. Let's go ahead and look at my top earning content from April. So which videos made me the most money in April so far? So my top earning video is actually a video that I posted in March. This video was posted back on March 10th, but it has been growing slowly over time, making it my top earning video for April. And that is my apartment hunting in LA. First installment of my moving series, which has gotten on about 1.6K views at this point. And it was definitely a video that did not take off at first and then really started growing and is still getting views daily, which is really cool to see. It is starting to slow down quite a bit now. So I think it's probably towards the end of its reign, but it did do pretty well for me. So that apartment hunting in LA video has made me $4.27 so far in April. This is cool to see because I haven't really had a video that I posted in a previous month that wasn't 
wasn't one of my like long-term super consistent performers in my top three earners in a while. So that's cool to see. My second top earner is a video that's always in my top three. I tried Bubble BFF so you don't have to. Made $3.93 this month. She's still going. She's still kicking. My third top performing video was my LA apartment hunting, applying for the perfect condo. This is the second part of the apartment hunting series that I posted. What's interesting here is that this video didn't really get many more views than like my confidence video, for example, but it made substantially more money. And that's because these apartment hunting videos actually have a really good RPM. Yeah, so the RPM on this video is $6.91. And that is extremely high for me. My average RPM for 2023 in total has been $3.86. So that LA apartment hunting video made me a total of $1.45 this month. So yeah, that's how my channel performed this month. It has been cool to see more videos kind of carry over and still be getting views from past months. Videos like my Notion tour or my nine to five work from home routine and obviously my apartment hunting videos. These videos have had a little bit of a longer lifespan than is typical for my content. Usually I feel like a video gets views for a few days and then pretty much dies. <laughs> and I really do want to have more content that can last and can keep pulling in views long term, like my Bumble BFF video, because I've seen how powerful that can be in terms of continuous revenue and helping to grow your channel. So that's one of the reasons why one of my goals for May is to focus more on searchable content in hopes that I will be able to get more of those kind of long term videos that can keep getting views over time instead of just something that I post and then it dies three days later. That's something I wanna work on continuing to grow because it makes it a lot easier to get views and make more money in a month when it's not all relying on the videos you uploaded. Like you guys saw in my analytics this month, like the videos I uploaded this month didn't do that hot. They still did like good and I'm happy with their performance, but they weren't exactly carrying enough weight to generate me a lot of revenue. So having videos from last month still pulling in views, having a video from like two years ago still pulling in views helped to make up a majority of my revenue from this month. My top two earners weren't even videos that I uploaded in April. So that's it for this monthly reset. If you did enjoy it, make sure you like the video. Subscribe because I do make a reset like this every single month. So if you enjoy monthly resets, you will want to stick around for that. If this is your first time here, hi, my name is Brielle. I make lots of content around post-grad lifestyle, productivity, personal development. So if any of those topics interest you, which they probably do if you're watching a monthly reset. You should totally subscribe and stick around for the rest of my content as well. And I'll see you guys soon with another video.